We're back. Yep, we're back. It's just still over 24 minutes said to go before 8 o'clock. You are listening to this Kai 959 special broadcast on elections for 2024 as we are coming to you live from the Results Operations Center. Myself and Pimela Mutene have been speaking to a variety of leaders, guests, organizations and institutions really reflecting on the numbers that have come out so far yeah. uh, of the elections. Do you want to take a quick one at uh, some of the leading parties before we move to our guest who's actually in number... Th- Ooh, there's been a change here. So, ANC so far uh, leading with one... 1.8 million votes from what we can tell, followed very closely by the Democratic Alliance, more than a million votes that have been counted. So far, 24% of uh, the support on the national ballot. A few minutes ago, the EFF was sitting at number three with just over 300,000 votes that were counted. That's now shifted to the MK. I told you, I told you. It's neck and neck. 9.3%. Neck on neck. The EFF and the MK party, it's going to be like, it seems to me like it's going to be like that throughout the night. Definitely. Well, we're joined by Soli Malati, who joins us from the Democratic Alliance, sitting at a comfortable two. But maybe before we get your reaction to number two, let's talk about number three. And I guess just your observations of the elections and the numbers trickling in so far. Look, I think it was, all, uh, first of all, thanks for having us here. I think it was always going to be one of the surprise elements in this election was, you know, how the MK would perform and at the expense of which parties it's, it's going to perform. And the early indications we are seeing is that they are making serious, serious inroads into both the EFF and the ANC support. Um, and I think Pamela is absolutely right. It's going to be a scramble for third place between, between those two. So you've had a good night. Uh, you've got a good, the past 12 hours were yeah. pretty good for the DA. The next 24 hours, what do you anticipate is going to be happening? Look, we're very, very encouraged by the early signs that we have seen. You know, we have just hit the 1 million mark, um, which is always an exciting milestone in any electoral count. But I think everything that we are seeing correlates with everything that we were projecting coming into this election and also tracking. So our thing was always, if we try to maintain, you know, governance in the Western Cape and then see elements of growth in Gauteng, in the Northern Cape, in the Free State, that will cumulatively push up our performance nationally. And every sign indicates that we'll have a positive growth uh, compared to 2019, which is a major milestone for us because if many of you remember in 2019, we suffered an electoral defeat yes. for the first time. Yes. And that began a very, very difficult chapter for the DA. And the period that ensued afterwards was about stabilizing the DA. Uh, we did have a better performance in the local government elections, mm. but this election was about, you know, growth and making sure that there is a positive upward trend. And we're very, very thankful that the early signs are showing that. But again, you know, we're still going to have the metros coming yeah. in, which are always a decisive factor mm. in shaping the final uh, lay of the land in terms of votes. But at this stage, even the external polling are indicating that it will be a positive election for the DN. We can only be grateful for the voters for that. I must say, I mean, political analysts were saying, look, the DA is shooting itself in the foot. Uh, that campaign, that election campaign that you mm. ran, where everybody just spoke about the flag and um, people getting quite annoyed. And mm. I'm not speaking for everybody here, but that you, that was sort of the noise of mm. the nation. And you agitated a lot. Um, some saying that you are not likely to grow, but maybe solidify mm. uh, a staunch DA member, so to speak. Are you surprised? Well, we are not surprised, you know, because like I said earlier, we do consistent um, polling tracks, um, which measure over a period of time, unlike snapshots polls that tell you within a two week or a three months period. And I think what we have been able to establish was that we're going to have a very solid performance in this election. But all that dependent on our ability to turn out DA voters to vote. But all of this... Hang on turn out DA, DA voters. voters to vote. Yeah, yeah, to vote. That's a crucial element. And we were guided by the fact that we had a very good registration drive because everything starts with registration. So we were confident from the registration statistics that we got out as many potential DA voters as possible to first register to vote mm -hmm. and make sure that once you've gotten them registered, you don't lose them, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I think we've had a very solid campaign in that Further to the point that you, you make about, you know, some of the criticism that our campaign have had. The reality is that as you get closer to an election date, 
in the political conscious space, tempers are going to rise and you are going to see political parties trying to squeeze each other. And I think one of the mistakes, particularly the political commentary had made, was to undermine the inroads the DA or to underestimate the inroads that the DA has made in solidifying its base compared to 2019. And that, I think, informed a lot of the in my view, misplaced projection about the DA is going to to not grow in this election. You had other people even projecting that will go down to under 20%. Yeah. So the multi-party charter, in hindsight, was it a good idea when you look at what we're seeing now? I mean, you, you really are all alone at the top <laughs> there when you look at your partners. Um, your thoughts on that? Look, was I- it a waste, wasted sort of... Ain't it energy? No, I think it was a necessary platform to establish in order to present to the voters a pre-election united front of opposition parties. It was always clear from us and our colleagues in the multi-party charter that in order to achieve our objective, we all needed to grow um, and, 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 and boost our efforts to stand closer to 50%. And while it's still very early and while a lot of that also depends on the ability of other parties to grow, from our side, from the onset, we were very clear that we can commit to at least bring half of the votes that are required to bring us close to to 50%. What we are seeing right now is that you know, we are not seeing the upward growth in some in some in some of our colleagues. No, they've done quite badly some of them. And and what will happen post the official announcement of the results is that the multi party charter will convene, as was the agreement uh, from the first place, to review the performance and where everybody else is. And that conversation will guide how each party then proceeds going forward or how as a collective we proceed. Are that might, you, yeah, oh. sorry, it will definitely have quite a significant influence then on coalition talks, right? Absolutely, because the purpose of the multi-party charter was an anticipation that the future of governance in South Africa at a national level is going to be coalitions. So we needed to put in the building blocks at a much earlier stage because there's one thing that is a that is a time constraint post the announcement of the results you've got 14 14 days days, to form to form a government and while 14 days might seem like a long time it's actually too short a time to be able to get to a, 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 a coalition agreement you know, and have all the necessary blocks agreed to. And we thought it would be much more proactive to deal with that ahead of the election. But we're always clear, all of this depends on our ability to garner votes that will set us on the path to setting a government. When you sort of look at where you are right now, and again, it's early days, mm. do you still invested in the multi-party charter or are you going to... Just go it alone. No, our our promise to the multi-party charter that we will be faithful to the last vote, to the last count, because it was clear that we needed, particularly as the largest party and also the initiator of the multi-party charter, to showcase that we are committed to it in good faith. And each and every member of the multi-party charter also recognized and agreed that once the election results are then announced, there must be, you know, a meeting that then talks about the next steps in terms of the future of the of the multi-party charter or the future of each and every individual party is going to have in terms of discussions. But from our side, we're always clear that let's set up this vehicle of the multi-party charter. Let's see how far it can get. And once it had gotten us, whether closer to 40% or about, you know, 50%, let's then convene again and have another conversation. Because ultimately, the future of the multi-party charter depends on how many votes it has gotten as a collective. Okay, your overall thoughts on how the IEC ran the elections? Yeah, I think there were elements of disappointment in one, how the process, um, you know, started off. In a, in a very lethargic way, um, resulting in some people, you know, standing on queues for unnecessarily longer hours than they should have. Some people had to walk away. And I think the purpose of the IEC is to ensure that each and every 
voter's individual experience going into a voting station is smoother. I think many South Africans are reasonable enough to understand and anticipate that you are going to spend a fairly long amount of time at a voting station. But what we experienced yesterday is totally unacceptable. And we hope that going forward, the IEC can address some of the infrastructural issues, particularly with the system being offline. Stuff like that should not be happening, um, you know, in this day and age because it speaks to elementary preparations. So we will have to leave it there for tonight, but really appreciate the observations that you've shared with us today. It's going to be a long night, a long Absolutely. weekend. So yeah. uh, do get some rest as uh, we continue to monitor the numbers so far. Truly appreciate your time, sir. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you. 